Good morning. It's time for a story, okay? This is called Violet the Pilot. <gasps> yes, it rhymes. Violet the Pilot by Steve Breen. That is an interesting looking airplane she's got. Let's find out how she how it got made, maybe. Mm -hmm. All right. Everyone in town knew that Violet Van Winkle was a little different. For starters, she and her parents lived in an odd-looking house next to the junkyard her father managed. And while other girls were playing with dolls and tea sets, Violet played with monkey wrenches and needle-nose pliers. was a mechanical genius. By the time she was two, she could fix almost any broken appliance in the house. By four, she could take apart the grandfather clock and completely reassemble it. Since she didn't have any friends aside from her dog, Orville, she would spend hours tinkering with things from her yard. Violet's parents were very proud of her. Too happy the time she put a lawnmower engine on her cousin's tricycle. Oh, look at him! I think he's going a little fast. I think he is going a little fast. The older she got, the more interesting Violet's creations became. Around the time she turned eight, she was building elaborate machines from scratch. And not just any old machines. Now, do you guys know what elaborate means? Elaborate. Yes, elaborate. Hmm. It just means there's a lot of things to it. Now, some of you may have an elaborate plan, like you want to do this and this and this, and you have to crawl under and do this. Elaborate just means there's a lot of parts to it, okay? Flying machines! Her parents couldn't believe their eyes when they saw Violet zoom by for the first time. They were a little worried in the beginning, but they quickly saw that she was a very pretty good pilot. Careful not to hit the house, Violet's father would yell and put on a sweater, her mother would add. Violet used anything she could find in the junkyard to make her wonderful contraptions. I like this. Now we know who it belongs to. That's right. There was the tub bubbler by Psycopter and the rocket can. Oh, oh my goodness, that would be fun to ride in. Yeah, the tub bubbler, it bubbles. I get a little scared on that one that it went a little fast, but maybe some of you would like to ride it. The pogo plane, the slide glider, and the wing of a jig to name just a few. My goodness, she's very inventive. Violet's engineering was pretty sound. The only real hazards were tall trees, piles of junk in the yard, and bugs in her tooth. Ooh, bugs in her teeth. Oh, that would be a hazard. Have you guys ever had a bug in your mouth? Miss Burke did once. I was talking to Mrs. Rodriguez and a fly went flying around right in my mouth. It was awful. 
school would see Violet eating lunch alone and make fun of her strange books and greasy coveralls. Claude and Clyde Mulrooney were especially obnoxious. Uh, what do you think obnoxious means? Well, from the words in the story and how they look, I'm thinking that obnoxious is not very nice. I, they don't look like they're treating her very nicely at all. It's like they look like they're making fun of her. Hmm. Well, and it did say it made fun of her. She and Orville spent, oh, sorry, skipped the page. Oh, that wouldn't make sense. Then, one day, Violet noticed a poster in the drugstore window. Air show, October 20th, it read. That's only two weeks away, Violet thought. Can kids fly in the show? Is homemade aircraft allowed? That night, Violet sat in her room thinking about the air show. She knew it would be a good feeling if one of her planes won a prize. And maybe then the kids at school would be nice to her. Violet pictured exactly where she would hang her blue ribbon. Does anyone see the blue ribbon? Oh, I hope you can read what it says. She and Orville spent the next few days combining the, not combining, combing the junkyard for just the right materials. When they had collected a giant pile of stuff, the building began. When on one day, the Mulrooney twins happened to pass by. Look, it's that girl from school. One of them said, what are you doing, weirdo? I'm building an airplane, she told them. The twins exploded in laughter, then mumbled something mean as they walked away. Orville barked at the boys, but Violet just went back to her project. Take it easy, buddy, she said. We're too busy to worry about them. Finally, after days of hard work, Violet had finished making her flying machine. She named the magnificent new craft the Hornet. Wait till the people in the grandstand see me flying this, Violet said to Orville. Oh my goodness. Kind of looks like, um, almost like a boat. A boat with wings. The test flight was a success. Oh my goodness. Look, she's flying and then she's going upside down. On the day of the big air show, Violet took off, bursting with excitement. Her parents' faces had beamed with pride when they wished her luck, and she thought about that as she flew through the clear autumn sky. What's autumn another word for? Fall. She calculated that the trip would take about mm, 20 minutes. She would arrive just in time for the start of the air show. Something caught Violet's eye. In the river below, a group of people were waving frantically. Violet lowered her altitude, that means how high up she is, so she's going down, to get a better look. A troop of Boy Scouts had run into trouble while canoeing. Violet knew she had to help fast. Oh my God. Oh, will she be able to help him, do you think? It wasn't easy rescuing all the boys, but Violet piloted the Hornet with careful precision. 
Saving the Scoutmaster from going over the falls was particularly dangerous. Oh my goodness. She's done a really good job. She saved all of them. Wow. I'm gonna look at something. Sometimes I like to pop back. Oh, I thought so. I want to go back. I want you to notice these boys right here. Look at those boys. That could be important. Violet dropped the Grateful Scouts off at the hospital. Then she checked her watch. 3.30, she said to Orville sadly. We missed the air show. She turned her plane toward home and sighed. It was a miserable feeling. Yeah, she didn't get to, she really wanted to go to the air show and show her cool airplane. But she didn't get to go because she was saving those scouts. That evening, Violet had no appetite for dinner. She just went upstairs and sat on her bed. All of a sudden, she heard lots of noise outside the house. She and Orville went to the window and discovered that a crowd of people had gathered. Somebody spotted her. There's Violet, the boy shouted jubilantly. There's our hero! The Van Winkles stepped us outside, squinting from all the flash bulbs that were popping. The press, the mayor, the fire and police chiefs, even kids and teachers from school, had all learned of the rescue that day and had come to praise her. Young lady, please accept this medal as a token of our gratitude and esteem, said the mayor, and he gave Orville a new collar with a license that read, K9 Hero. Do you see two of the scouts? <gasps> Who are those scouts? Oh, right here, sorry. Who are those scouts? <gasps> oh. Hmm. From that day on, Violet's parents let her fly whenever she wanted. But her mom still made her wear a sweater. And this gentleman's on an airplane and he's reading something called Popular Science Monthly. Violet Van Winkle. And then he looks out the window. Oh. Now, did you know who those two scouts were? She saved him, didn't she? But they were also what? Hmm, I'm not going to tell you. It's the two scouts you say, but who else were they? Hmm. All right, I have a question for you for today. What? She wanted to be a pilot more than anything. What is something you want to be more than anything? Maybe it's, maybe you want to be a motorcycle rider. A little dangerous, but maybe that's what you want. Maybe you want to be a doctor. I want to hear from you what you want to be more than anything. All right. Have a great day, and I will see you back here tomorrow.